Welcome to the Battle Ready Sermon Podcast with Captain Rob Westwood Payne. I'm not 100% sure how you follow that, <laughs> but I will do my best. Superman has made an appearance a couple of times in the last few weeks. For those of you uh, who are perhaps not on social media, Superman had a selfie with Theresa May a couple of weeks ago. She had, she had no idea at all, but, um, but there we go. You saw it, there we go. Excellent. Good. Good. So there we go. Jesus is tired. He's weary. He's been walking for a long time. The scriptures tell us at the beginning of John, uh, or at the beginning of this uh, passage from John chapter 4, that he was walking through Samaria to Galilee. So if he was going from Judea, which is where he is in previous chapters, and making his way to Sychar, which is where this well was, that's a distance of about 30 miles. And with the rough terrain in between Judea and uh, Sychar, it would have probably taken around 22 hours to walk. Now do you understand why Jesus is tired? <laughs> He's weary. And he decides to sit down at this well in, at the hottest part of the day. Most people would be inside in the relative cool of their houses or other buildings. But Jesus knows he has work to do. He knows he has this significant conversation to have. He sends his disciples off to get food, to replenish him after the long walk. And then, as we heard, a woman comes to the well to draw water. Now, at first glance, that would seem not untoward, would it? That's what women did in those days. They did things like draw water uh, from the well. So it was no great surprise uh, that that's what she was doing, except that. It was in the middle of the day. Why would you choose the hottest part of the day to bring your very large jug? I'm not sure that the jug on the cartoon really suggests what the jug would have been like, probably carried on her shoulders and all that sort of thing. Why would you do that in the hottest part of the day? What we learn as we look through the passage is that because of what this woman had done, she was not particularly well liked in the village. People gossiped about her. People would shun her. People would not speak to her. People would turn away from her. And so it was easier for her to come in the middle of the day to the well when there would be nobody there than it was to come and see the rest of the village women when they came, either perhaps earlier in the morning when it was cooler or later in the afternoon when it began to cool down. And what do you know? She comes, hoping to avoid everybody, and discovers this man sitting there. And not only is he sitting there, but he begins speaking to her. What's the first thing that Jesus asks from this woman? You're allowed to answer when I ask you a question. <laughs> Interaction? No, not quite. What's the first thing that he asks for? A drink. Yes. He wants a drink. Now this, is, this stops the woman in her tracks for two reasons. One, Jesus is a Jew and she is a Samaritan. And the Jews and the Samaritans didn't talk to each other. In fact, they hated each other. Most Jews would avoid Samaria and take the long route round just so that they didn't have to walk through Samaria and come across Samaritans. So the fact that Jesus as a Jew was prepared to speak to this Samaritan woman was unheard of. And on top of that, for a Jew to speak to any woman of any race that he didn't know was also against the rules. And Jesus had higher standing as well as a rabbi, as a teacher. So the idea that he would speak to a woman that he didn't know was totally against the rules. And so it's a bit of a startled moment for this woman. Jesus didn't do what people expected to do. Have you ever noticed that? Jesus didn't follow the rules. When we're Christians, we think that following rules is all that we should do. And we, and we uh, have a problem with those who are rebels. 
But Jesus was a rebel. He never did what people expected him to do. So what did Jesus say that he could give to the woman? Living water. Water that is living. Would anyone like to come and hold this for me? I can't do this by myself because there's three of them and I've only got two hands. Thank you, Tanya. Water that... Taryn, even. I don't know where that came from. Water that is living. Jesus said, if only you knew the God, the gift God has for you and who you were speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. The woman was intrigued. What, what does Jesus mean by living water? Does it have come some kind of special powers? And maybe Jesus has special powers because being the practical woman that she was, she says to him, well, how are you going to provide me with this water? You don't even have a bucket. How are you going to draw water from the well? She's intrigued about what Jesus means about living water, water that is living. She couldn't understand what Jesus was talking about. But of course, Jesus was not talking about physical water. He was talking in word pictures, in picture language. Jesus carries on speaking to the woman. What did Jesus say she would never be if she drank his water? Thirsty. Yes, she would never be thirsty again. Come on, John T. Ethan, you can be the next one. Oh, okay. Well, I've only got three, so you might have to come and hold it together. Jesus said, those who drink this water, this living water that I offer you, will never be thirsty again. Now she really thought Jesus had special powers. Imagine being a woman who carries a really heavy jar on your head at the hottest part of the day, from whichever village she came out to, out to the well, drawing water from the well, and then walking back again. Imagine hearing that you'll never be thirsty again. You must say, oh, that's great. I'm never going to have to carry this jar again. I'm never going to have to take that walk in the hottest part of the day. I'm never going to have to try and avoid people again. I can just, I don't know, stay in my house, keep away from the villages that are gossiping about me, and I'll never be thirsty again. What does this all mean? But Jesus goes on to tell her. What did Jesus say this living water would give people? Life, eternal life, eternal life. Come on, Aoife and Ethan, one side each. There we go. Eternal life. It becomes a fresh, bubbling spring, Jesus says, within them, giving them eternal life. Again, the woman really couldn't understand what this meant. But at this stage, she at least knew that Jesus was talking about some kind of hope. New life, the potential of fresh new life. And not just in eternity, but now. Now and for eternity. And later on, it becomes obvious that Jesus knows all about this woman knows all about what she's done, about the life that she's led, but he still offers her this living water. Did you notice that? Jesus doesn't say, well, you know what, you need to behave and, and, you know, follow me and behave and all of that kind of stuff before I can give you this living water. He says straight away, you can have this living water that will give you the potential of fresh new life now and for eternity. Jesus makes the same offer to you and me today. This living water that will means we will never be thirsty again and that we will have this potential for fresh new life. And again, he doesn't ask us to behave and to conform first and to follow the rules. The second reading that we had from Roger, Romans chapter 5, verse 8 says... But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us. Not when we started to behave, not when we started to believe in him, but whilst we were still sinners. God offers us the potential of fresh 
new life while we were still sinners. And so while we're still in the wrong and while we're still in a broken relationship with our creator God, we can ask him to forgive us for those sins and to have his new life, to have his fresh water, his fresh potential for new life, both now and forever. And Paul goes on to say, since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son, while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. Isn't that worth a hallelujah? It is. It is. If you have not yet um, accepted this living water, If you have not yet accepted this potential for fresh new life, then I encourage you to do so this morning. We have a few moments to reflect on this story. And if you've not yet done it, then now is the moment to reach out to Jesus and say, I want that fresh new life. I want that fresh start. Jesus, will you give me the the fresh new water, the living water that you promised that Samaritan woman? For those of us who have already accepted that promise, who are already living lives of never thirsting again and uh, having that fresh potential in our lives now and for eternity, then we can take the opportunity this morning to thank God for his living water. Jesus promised the woman living water of such quality that it would never end. All she had to do was to believe and trust in his promise. Today you may be in a place where you need to believe it. Or you may be in a place where you need to trust it. And to have faith in Jesus. You can receive new life. You and I can both receive new life today. Because Jesus offers it to us. He makes it possible for us through his death on the cross. And so what I invite you to do is that those cups that you were given at the beginning of the meeting, if you want to, while some music plays and reminds us of the healing streams that Jesus gives to us, come forward and scoop a little water out of the silver bowl and just stand before the cross. And either accept this living water if you've never accepted it before, or thank God for it if it's part of your life now. And as you stand there, you can take a sip of the water as you thank God or you speak to God about it. Uh, Or if you don't want to drink it, then just drop it in this bucket on your way back to your seat. But just take these few moments to contemplate what God is offering you. Every day we can start with the potential for fresh new life. That's what Jesus is offering you this morning. Let's reflect together. If you would like to subscribe to Battle Ready Sermons wherever you choose to listen to podcasts or if you'd like to receive them direct to your inbox, head to www.equippinghispeople.com forward slash sermons and follow the instructions.